watching The Forum. I'm your host, Ashley Tate, here with my co-host, Christy Largent, and we're here with a craftsman. We're going to be talking to a couple craftsmen, or crafts people, people <laughs> today, okay. and this is John Harrison, and he is the owner of Harrison Violins, and he makes these violins from scratch. Like from a piece of wood. Which, like a cake. Yes. Well, yes. I don't know how you do this, but it's amazing. So we have to dig right in. Yeah. Tell how us. You, how on earth did you get started making violins? Yeah. Do you ever know anyone who's a violin maker before? I haven't. So I'm kind of excited. We're excited to have you on here today. Very excited. Well, yeah. Th thank you. I'm happy to be here. Um, I started working on guitars when I was in high school in a wood shop. Oh. I would repair guitars. I played guitar from a young age, so it was natural for me to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After I got out of the Air Force, I got a job here in town at a music store called Flaherty's. Yes, uh -huh. I remember. I got my first flute there. Oh, well, I, I probably waited on you. You probably did. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little Yamaha. I don't know, my rental. Mm -hmm. I think we got our, mm -hmm. the Yamaha there. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. So you started working in Flaherty's. Flaherty's, yeah. I was repairing guitars there because Chuck Lawson, the manager, was not good at repair. He oh, didn't okay. like to do it. <laughs> and he said, please, if you want to do it, do it. Got to so, know your strengths. Um, and people started bringing violins in because there was no violin maker here in town. Oh. So that was my initial exposure to the violins, mm -hmm. family of instruments. Yeah. And the more I worked on those, the less interesting the guitars were. Really? So it's a different skills. So what, would, so what made the violin so much more interesting than the guitar? Because for most people, <coughs> for people who don't play an instrument, <sighs> I know. Um, <laughs> we, I mean, we don't really, why well, I don't understand the difference between the guitar and the violin. Like what would make it so much more interesting? They seem the same. There's a 500 plus year history with the violins yeah. where the guitar is not near that old. The f guitar family is, but guitars as we know them now yeah, are yeah. not that old. Oh, wow. So there was a lot to learn about violin work. Uh, far more sensitive, more critical. Mm. You might be working on an instrument that's worth a million dollars or more. <laughs> How so often you, did you yeah. work on an instrument worth a million dollars? Well, as of now, uh, quite a few. Yeah. But wow. back yeah. then... So that would be a Stradivarius? Mm -hmm. Or a Guarneri or some mm -hmm. of the other famous Italian makers of the 16th wow. and 17th centuries. Wow. So you now you brought some violins with you. I did. Is this the time to get into them and you tell us about like want. how long does it take to make them and what do you do first? And yeah, okay. let's look at well, those let's because let's yeah. I'll, I'll set a couple up here. I brought two instruments. Um, those are beautiful. And I I'll explain. Help you, but I'm not going to touch it. Oh. <laughs> Keep the water away. Here, set no that water. Aside. I yeah. don't need that. This <laughs> is making me nervous just having these up here. It's I like know. they're beautiful. All right. Now these are two that I've made. They're recent productions. One looks old, the other looks new. The the antiqued instrument, which would be this, is oh, well, has that. got wear pattern. Yeah. The varnish is chipped. Um, it looks like an old violin in great shape. Yeah. There are violin players, violinists, who don't, don't mind playing a new violin. They might prefer it because mm -hmm. they generally play what, better than old ones. Yeah. But they don't want it to look new. Oh, right. The right. concert master might frown at them mm -hmm. for a new violin. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we have to be able to make them look old in a genuine way. Not just beat up, but yeah, yeah. For right. People authentically, who know what, yeah, like authentic, authentic yeah. wearing here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and all now, the places yeah. they would wear. Right. What you guys might not know, which I find to be just absolutely impressive, is that he doesn't get, what, from what I understand, you don't get like the body of the violin already pre-made like this. I mean, he cuts everything and how do you do it? Because you said there was some sort of Italian method or something that you use. What is that? When I decided to start making violins, from scratch. Yeah, literally from scratch. I bought a book called The Secrets of Stradivari by uh, uh, Simon Sacconi. And he is the foremost expert on what Stradivari did to make his famous violins when he was alive, his method. Yeah. And he was actually 
200 years later than the first violins of that method. Mm -hmm. So I thought, mm -hmm. if I'm going to make instruments, I want to do it properly, and I want to follow the classic, what's called the classic Italian method. Wow. And that's what I do. And we start with a piece of pieces of wood that look like firewood to most people, but they're that's cut crazy. in the forests of Europe specifically for violin making. Mm. Oh my God! And both of these instruments have uh, the maple back and sides and neck are made from wood from the forests of Bosnia. Mm. That's beautiful. Do you know what? Hold, can, so they're maple. Can you guys zoom that's in unusual on that? striping. Can, mm -hmm. Here, let's see if we can. Did you, is that? You now hold that's it. not your. Is that your staining? Because maple doesn't normally have no, those kind no, of. No, um, maple that is, marking. is. It's clear. Ivory white. Yeah. No, so the markings are in the wood. That is the wood uh -huh, grain. The stripes. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that, that's called the figure or the curl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's in the wood. Mm -hmm. And the way that works is the the tree. If you look at maple or spruce, it doesn't matter, um, at a microscopic level it's like a whole bunch of straws bundled together. Mm -hmm. And the, the hollow little straws are what uh, the uh, sap mm -hmm. travels in the tree. Mm -hmm. well, how long does one of these take to make? I mean, you get a piece of wood and how long does it take? Because I mean, I just—it's hard for me to wrap my head around you making. When I start one, from the time I start it, it's—it uh, takes about two or three months wow. from start to finish, because everything has to be carved. The curve of the top and back are carved from a thick piece, uh -huh. so those shapes are carved on the outside, and then I have to turn it over and hollow it out on the inside, because the the wood is thin, and the those thicknesses have to be precise. Yes. So I what kind of so. tools mm -hmm. are you using? I'm using gouges, uh, chisels, and finger planes, which are little teeny planes with a curved sole. So, so I nothing can, electric? I can, no electric, mm -hmm. no. Wow. I do have a bandsaw and, and a drill press at the shop, but the only thing I use those for is cutting out the, the perimeter the initial, of yeah. the piece of wood yeah. and mm -hmm. then from there everything is hand mm -hmm. done. Okay, so you do do the band saw to get the shape. Just the rough the shape, mm -hmm. yeah. And but then, then from there I start carving. So is the edging separate piece of wood from the face no. and the sides? No. The the top is one piece, okay. the sides are six pieces okay. and the back is one piece, one piece or two pieces glued back together. That's because incredible. you see this the flame mm -hmm. oh, oh, I can see, see, yeah, I can see the flame on, on the back, this oh, curl yeah. on the back mm -hmm. is mirrored on both sides. Mm -hmm. Originally that was one piece of wood that was cut down the middle and opened up like a mm -hmm. book and glued back together. Okay. So that that, wow. that flame is the same on both sides. Gorgeous. Or it can be a one piece back. Mm -hmm. and, and so the way that you know that this is your violin, which I think is kind of interesting, is right here on this piece, it says your initials and your name. I mean, your last name. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's a stamp I use for the bridges. When I carve the bridge, I put my name on the bridge. This is wood also. That's maple. Mm -hmm. That's the natural color of that mm -hmm. maple before I oh, varnish really? it. So how big is the violin making world? My children yeah. took violin. We bought, I think the first one was 80 bucks. The other was 150 mm -hmm. starter, be, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mini oh size God. violins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was very reasonable to get into. How big is the world in these? I'm assuming this is a high end violin. Yeah. I mean, the yes. amount of time you're talking yes. about is mm -hmm. you're, you're having mm -hmm. concert masters from various symphonies using your mm -hmm. instruments, I'm guessing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, my instruments go all over the world. And how big mm -hmm. is that? Like, how many of these sell a year? Well, it depends. Um, I can sell three or four or five in a year, or, I, um, you know, it can be a slow year, depending on. So, three, four, economic five would conditions. be good. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> and you, and you, you, sell to, you, tell, you sell to big, like, not big stores, but in bigger cities, you can sell to a store I, there. So I will send instruments to major violin shops in in uh, urban centers in the United States on consignment. Mm. Oh, really? Okay. They don't necessarily buy them. They, do you ever go they, overseas? Yeah. Do, do you I buy? don't. Okay. The okay, instruments do. Okay, yeah. that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you sell. So them someone overseas. will come yeah. to Boston and or New York or wherever the premier and, shop yeah. would be, mm -hmm. and they would see your violin there. Mm -hmm. They can play them. They can mm -hmm. compare them with other instruments. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and if I 
win the contest, then I make a sale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there yeah. a lot of violin makers in the U.S.? There is now. Uh, 50, 60 years ago, there were very few. But um, starting in, I think it was 1972, uh, the Violin Making School of America oh. was established. I, I'm not sure about the year, but it yeah, was established yeah. in Salt Lake City, oh, Utah. Oh, really? And um, uh, they've turned out well, between six and eight or ten violin makers every year. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. And wow. it's a four-year program. It's a serious college wow. program. So. If someone mm -hmm. were interested in, in this, in violin making as opposed mm -hmm. to playing, what, what, mm -hmm. what would you suggest they do? What steps would you tell them to take? Well, for younger people, um, they've got to graduate from high school. Uh, it helps to have at least two years of college, mm -hmm. and then they need to apply to one of these violin making schools. Oh, okay. Either here in the United States, there's, I think, three major schools here, mm -hmm. or in Europe. Okay. Uh, Germany or Italy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not easy to get in, especially in Europe. Yeah. But if they have a love for it and they're driven to be tenacious about it, they can get in. They need to complete those programs. And then once they get that diploma mm -hmm. and graduate from the violin making school, that opens the door for them to go into a major shop in mm -hmm. a in an urban mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. and start getting the experience mm -hmm. real world experience mm -hmm. of how to deal with customers how to run a business uh, wow. that kind of thing so what a whole nother world I never knew it about really is a whole nother thank world. you mm -hmm. so much yeah. John John Harrison Harrison violins mm -hmm. has been our guest thank you so much what thank a treat mm -hmm. so we're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna come back with the second half of the show and we're gonna have a different artisan which you're gonna be very excited to learn about as well so thanks for watching and we'll be right back mm -hmm. in just a few seconds Still talking about craftsmen, or craftswomen in this case, <laughs> and we're going to be talking to Irene Thorup, and she is the owner of a bookbinding business that she's had for over 35 years, and it's pretty impressive as you can see some of these books up here. She has made every single one of these books, and so kind of to get started, I guess the first question is kind of how you got started in bookbinding, because that's kind of... Well, uh, when we got married, my husband uh, it was an attorney. He passed away now. Oh. And um, he is a history buff, and he saw this ad in the newspaper, Chico newspaper, that uh, somebody wanted to sell their little bindery. Oh. And so he got in touch with uh, this fellow and uh, learned that he learned the craft that he knew for two years from a German curator at the Huntington Museum. Oh my gosh. And yeah. so he bought a book press down there and book stamp, uh, you know, to gold stamping machine and, and uh, all that stuff and hauled it to Chico. Oh. And he had it for a year and he decided he wanted to sell it because he much rather uh, wanted to be in the building. Oh. That's when the boom was still going oh, you know, into yeah. building, and so he wanted to do this, and so that's how we came to buy his business, and we moved it up to Paradise and had fun ever since. So <gasps> now you, <laughs> so wh how that sounds to me is like your husband bought something for himself, well, and you ended up doing well, it. Well, <laughs> actually, he wanted something in the home that I could do. Okay, uh -huh. you know. okay, yeah, yeah. And it worked out wonderful. We yes, had three did. sons. Yes, and I did. was always home, even when, you know, even when I was working, yes. they knew where I was. And uh, yeah, 
It was a good thing. And you obviously Amazing. enjoy it. So I do. Now, I, I do. obviously, you're not doing like just slap together glued <laughs> bindings. <laughs> Tell us about the process. I mean, how uh, do you go about this? These have been rebound by you. Well, and, actually right? restored. Restored. Yeah, so tell yeah. us about what the process is. Well, the process is that people come in with their treasures and they are tattered and torn, the pages, and they don't have a spine because, you know, this, this book, for example, is from 1895 and has seen a lot. I wish it could tell us what it's seen over <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, know, and where yeah. it's really? been yes. because so I, uh, things torn, I showed you some of those things that I do. I have to iron the crumbled pages first before I can mend them, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it, it's time consuming work. Mm -hmm. And this and is a dictionary. So this I mean is a dictionary. Just so it's not, this one over here is a Bible, but this right. one's a dictionary. And yeah. I don't know if we can see from the other side here, but you can see and that's what dictionaries that aren't on the website uh, aren't, aren't on the web. That's what they look like. Um, yeah. And and you had to iron all of these pages well, to buy all them. of them. Okay, I'm <laughs> still be doing it. Yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, but there were lots and lots of torn pages, especially those that people like, you yes, know, and yeah. and go mm -hmm. to often. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if children have been involved or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. And these pages are not very. Yeah, they're very thick. thin. It's yeah. tissue, very yeah. tissue yeah. paper. Yeah. Some of yeah. them, you know, yeah. so it's easily torn. But I mean, for a hundred years, a hundred and twenty year old book, mm. it uh, still was in good, good condition, except it missed the whole spine. Mm -hmm. So you so basically so came in and replaced the entire spine uh, the using spine, leather, leather. Yes, yes, and actual. then some had uh, this one had duct tape on it you know mm. and uh, oh. with the iron actually I found this out with this book with the iron over the duct tape it just oh, it loosens, it loosens oh, yeah. the oh, thing and it comes up, right yeah. off oh, wow. yeah, yeah. and I should have taken it before but I was yeah. so excited <laughs> that this would come off so good that yeah. I totally forgot to take a picture I do oh, have yeah, pictures before, you know, picture before uh, and yeah. after but it's always fun for the people actually to see because some can't remember how bad right. things mm -hmm. were yes you know. so what happened uh, what happens next so you're you're gonna iron the pages right. and then what I sew them in there you sew the pages yes. in mm -hmm. by hand yes do you ever use a machine no how no, do you sew? No. How do you even sew paper? Well, I mean, I, I, just, I, I guess I should have. See here, for example, you can see the thread. Oh my gosh! I have to go through. This is a special technique with the old books. They yeah. used to be on cords, mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. one was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you go around the cord, and mm -hmm. you know it's time consuming, and there is where the money. So yeah, was, exactly. Yeah. And so, you know. so you had to, and 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 I mean, for what you're doing. You said, what would this be? Probably, how, how this much would one is probably $400, $500, depends. And for what she's doing, I mean, I really feel like it's worth so much more. I mean, well, don't these let me be are your business treasures. manager. Yeah. <laughs> you know, these people really only come yes. and put this money in. Right. I'm doing really a Bible for about 650 because it is an awful shape and hasn't got the back nor mm. a spine, just the wow. front. Oh my gosh. Uh, so it, it yeah. all depends, but these are treasures and when people have treasures, mm -hmm. they want they it want restored it because okay. they want to give it to their family mm -hmm. members, yes, you yes. know, down so the line. Do you, have you taken classes over the years yeah. that have nope. taught you all? Oh. No, no, no it's classes. Oh, there is learning. nobody really that I knew in Paris and nobody. So it's just Wow. You learn. So, by are you doing in it. contact with other restorers, nope. like at Library of Congress? No. Nope. No. Oh. No. Okay. No. You've just this done it all on your own. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. And uh, I'm in wow. three books in the yellow pages, and I guess they are <laughs> on, uh, you know, yeah, on yeah. the internet, and they find me, uh -huh. and uh, 
they call and some sent their books because mm -hmm. they have actually heard or seen something mm -hmm. from a friend yes you know in weeds or wherever you know these people are and it goes word by mouth mm -hmm. I do a lot of Bibles because Bibles really mean something to people mm -hmm. you know that they take to church and yes. then eventually they mm -hmm. fall apart or pages come out if they're not sewn. Yeah. Oh, so, so you uh, do modern day Bibles? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Lots of them. Yeah, like Lots I have some that the pages are, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. like one my grandma gave me when I was in eighth grade. Yeah. Oh, I'd see, love to have it rebound exactly. in leather. Yeah. It's Except little, but yeah. these, This is the leather. It's a mm -hmm. wonderful cowhide, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, people thick. are really, really enjoying their Bibles again. And this, wow. this is a hide. It's not the bonded leather, mm -hmm. and I should have Big brought difference. in some bonded leather which they take all the scraps and they mash it together and they make beautiful sheets but it's not even as good as imitation leather because yeah. I tell you it just falls apart Flakes and people apart. have no idea as long as they say leather right. see yeah. leather no, yeah, exactly. and then they're surprised when their Bible yeah. falls uh -huh. apart uh -huh. or their know? sofa <laughs> people so who buy know. bonded leather oh. Right, bonded, bonded leather, bonded leather yes. sofa will so fall So this apart. is a hide and lasts forever. Yeah. It's, it's fabulous. It's not cheap, but if you want something to give Last. to your yeah. children, you know, sure. down the line. Sure. Uh, yeah. Now you did one big project that was with the monks. When yeah. the encyclopedias. Just yeah. uh, the New Clairvaux, Clairvaux Abbey yeah. that yes. we had on the show. Yeah. 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 So tell us a little bit about that. We can't see the pictures because we right, it's right. In the well, uh, they periodically had their special books in Latin and whatnot, you yeah. know, um, bound by us. And uh, two years ago, was it now? Maybe a year and a half ago, they came with this Encyclopedia Britannica mm -hmm. that was in a fire and somebody donated it mm -hmm. to them mm -hmm. and they knew that this was apparently the best encyclopedia 1911 which had the most in there yeah. and they did they left out from then on yeah. stuff mm. and so they felt it uh, they wanted to have it all rebound mm -hmm. so I only had to redo the spines in leather you know, because oh, they right. were all disintegrated, mm -hmm. singed. Oh. And uh, yeah, so they have it in their library together with all kinds of old, old 16, 1700 wow. things that we have restored for them. Wow. Over the years, yeah. Now, the accent, I, I think everyone probably loves listening to you speak. It sounds, it just sounds so pretty. Um, <laughs> So I just have to clarify that it's not from Germany, it's from Switzerland. Yeah. And you moved here with your husband, you, you came no, to America? No, my husband came to Switzerland to marry me in Switzerland. He was an attorney, it had what? to all be done proper, okay? <laughs> oh my God. Where did you meet? I Where love did you it. Meet uh, well, we met, uh, <laughs> I met his parents in New York and uh, they said, well, we have this son in <laughs> Salt Lake City and uh, he would love to show you the town because ah. they knew we, you know, would go there. Anyway, long story. Uh, yeah. That's he awesome. came <laughs> over there and we have a dossier to prove what I had to go through. I'm telling oh you, doing x-rays of my breast as if we, Switzerland is a third world country, <laughs> you know. <laughs> In 79, no. yes, I had to go to my hometown um, police station to get an affidavit that I've never had anything to do with the law, was oh, not incarcerated. Heavens. Oh, oh yes, a whole dossier full of stuff, so that's how difficult it is even yeah. if he comes to Switzerland to get married <laughs> marry me there <laughs> legally and then come over here you had yeah to jump through hoops yeah. yes yes yeah. yes so well he must have been an amazing man because it was yes yeah. because you know he we was. don't jump through too many hoops for regular jokes <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, he was wonderful, and uh, he had Lou Gehrig's disease, and mm. that's now eight years ago. That is to say, twelve years ago. After mm. four years, oh, yeah. He um, well, away. I want to talk. We we don't. We're almost out of time, oh. but I want to yes. give a little plug because your husband wrote two children's books yes. when he found out he was ill. Yeah. He wanted to write these books, and he yeah. was obsessed with apples. Yes. And so, a story based on apple variety names, and he did it's two of these cute. darling things. She has four thousand. At, ho at her home. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you would like to support her, not only with the book binding, but seriously, these are cute children's <coughs> books. If you're looking for a special gift, these are darling. Exactly. So, yeah. thank you for bringing them oh, and sharing so them welcome. with us. So, you're we welcome. love having you. What an interesting yes. day today, huh? Yeah, yeah. Was great. yeah the, really the violin, yeah. the, the yeah. book binding. Um, any last words of wisdom? As we head out, with people have books, taking care of what they have. What yeah. do you What do you, you say? You know, uh, find a good bookbinder that really takes care of and knows how to repair and restore your treasures. Yeah, yeah. And uh, don't let them go to pots before you come to me. Yeah, take <laughs> care of them. Take care of them. Uh, you know, well, thank take you. Care of Irene, thank you so oh, much. You're so welcome. Yeah, and we're going <laughs> to head out. We're almost finished. Thank you for watching the forum, and we appreciate you watching. We look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.